we have seen that <coughs> sorry. we have we seen that uh, TCP communication takes place in three phases, right? The connection establishment, the data transfer, and then the termination, right? And uh, each stage will will require uh, packets to be uh, sent back and forth, right? To establish the connection, especially. So once the connection is established, only then data can transfer takes place. <coughs> so this makes this makes sure that the TCP connection is always reliable, right? <coughs> All right, so let's take a look at how the TCP handles the sliding windows. We know that uh, TCP uses sliding windows principles. Right? So let's see how actually how actually it takes care, of especially between receiver and the senders. So here, TCP uses two windows in each direction. That means, for a client, it will have a send and a receive window. The server will also have a send and receive window by themselves, right, separately so that they can send and receive information at the same time. Remember this is TCP uses the full duplex uh, communication mode. Right? You can send and receive data at the same time. So the send window is basically <coughs> will be decided or dictated by the receiver, meaning that the receiver will inform the sender how much data he can receive. Right? So if the receiver says I can receive more data, the, the sender's window can, can increase. If the receiver say, I can only receive less amount of data, then the sender's window will shrink. Right? So it is adjustable, and flexible. And the send window is also affected by congestion. Right? The network congestion, then, make sure, then the sender will try to reduce the amount of data which is sent. So again, the, the send windows will, be, will become smaller. Right? So the size of it is adjusted dynamically. The receive window, again, at the same time, it opens and closes, but it does not shrink. So the receive window remains more or less the same size. Only that it just closes or, or, or opens according, depending on the packets received, right? But it doesn't, it doesn't reduce this. Right, so this. <coughs> right? So the receive window is part of a, of a bigger buffer, normally to allow the data storage. So this is the receive, this is the send window. So in this case, the example is 100 bytes, right? So that means it can actually store. Uh, it can it can actually store uh, 100 bytes of data ready to be sent out, right? So remember, each byte will be numbered, right? So in this case, what it says is that this is the beginning of the window, and this is the end of window. That means. You can only the sender can only send data if the packet is within this. If if, if the data is within this particular window itself, right? So currently it's showing from byte two zero one to three hundred because size is hundred. So that means these are the are the bytes of data it can send out. So normally divided two parts. The front part of the send window is basically the packets or rather the the bytes which you have sent sent but you have not received the confirmation yet or acknowledgement. Right? And then the remaining one at the back is the one which is normally empty. That means these are the, these are the uh, data bytes which can be sent out later. Right? So are eligible to be sent, waiting to be sent, but not sent out yet. Right? So as each time you send a batch of data, it will be acknowledged. So if once the sender receives acknowledgement, that means this byte can be actually moved out of the window. So the, the window will slide towards the right, meaning that the 201 now becomes, is out of the window itself. So that means it has already been confirmed and uh, we do not need to keep track of it anymore. So once it moves, it means there is extra space here now. Right? So new packet is ready to be, can be sent now. Right? So that's how it works. Right? And the send window size, Will will depend uh, will depend uh, will depend on the uh, the size advertised by the receiver. Right? As I mentioned earlier, so the receiver will determine how fast how much data can be sent. So the send window basically will will close from the left hand side. So as the packets are acknowledged, the the, the window from the left hand side or left wall will 
move towards right, right? After each one acknowledge, this can move forward. Right? Because they, they already acknowledge they can be removed from the window itself. And then once the packet uh, once so that means now the new new data on the on the right, right hand side can actually be uh, potential to be sent out. So the window here can open on the right hand side. But if the receiver says it is it wants to reduce the, 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 the data received, right? It cannot cope with the data data amount sent by the trans, by the sender, then the right hand side of the window will actually shrink depending on the size given by the receiver. Right? The receiver says it's too much data, okay, then I will receive I will reduce my window size. And this window size will be reduced from the right hand side. Right? That's what it means. The receive window itself, again 100 bytes. So in this case, it consists of two parts. So re receive window is the window itself plus the buffer. So the, buff the, so the window is basically, receive window is part of the allocated buffer. And the buffer, so both of these is, is, is the, is the uh, size of the 100 bytes here. Right? So again, the same thing. So the front of the window, the beginning of the window it will indicate what is the next data byte which is ready to be received. So it means that 261 here means that the next byte it should receive is 261. Right? And, and we have, so the, the, the receiver is ready to receive from 261 until 300. Any packets received within here is okay, Can, will be accepted. So as the packet is received, acknowledgement, acknowledgement will be sent, and now the window will be shifted towards right, right position, and then so new, new data bytes is now ready to be received, right? So same thing, as the as the bytes as the windows as the bytes are received and acknowledged, the left hand side of the the left wall of the window will close. And then the right right wall of the window will open, right? It basically shift from left to right position. And at the same time, after the although the packet has been received correctly and acknowledged by the TCP on the receiver side, but the packet or the data has not been used or consumed by the process itself. Right? So you wait here until the data is collected by the process. So this is part of the buffer itself. Only once the data has been collected by the buffer, has been sent to it, only then it will be removed from the, from the allocated buffer. So the buffer also will move then towards the right. right? So this is how it works. So the, the receive window is basically buffer size minus the number of bytes waiting to be pulled. So but window, receive window is basically, this, this window size is equal to buffer size minus the bytes of data is, which is waiting to be uh, waiting to be consumed by the user right? so in this case the, the, the window size receive window does not shrink right this, this size remains more or less the same all right now let's look at we'll, we'll see how the two windows are being used to control the flow of information bytes between the day, between the transfer right the main idea be behind flow control is that we, we want to make sure that the sender receives data at a rate which the receiver can accept we do not want to overwhelm the receiver itself right so it balances the rate of between the, the, the rate a, a producer creates data and the rate the consumer uses the, the data itself right that in this diagram we have seen before right the sender process will push the the data to the TCP. TCP will push the segments out to the to onto the network, go to the TCP on the receiver side. The TCP on the receiver side will then put in a buffer, and then the packets or the data will be pulled or, or, or used by the receiver, or the consumers, one by one, whenever it's convenient. Right? So the push here, push here, but here is basically being pulled. Right? Then as the data is sent out, then the TCP on the receiver side will feed back to the TCP on the, on the, on the sender side to, to indicate whether you are sending data too fast or whether I'm willing to receive and so on. Right? So that's where the feedback is. 
and the TCP also on the on the sender side will feedback to the uh, to the application to say whether the, the, there's enough buffer or in the window to be able to accommodate the data coming in from the sender itself. Right. <coughs> right. So how the flow control works is basically the TCP forces the sender and receiver to adjust their windows, right, to make sure that the data can be sent out, can be received in the receiver's window uh, with, with enough space, right? There's enough buffer size remains. So they can adjust their window sizes according to needs. So the send window is basically controlled by the receiver, as I mentioned earlier, right? It closes when bytes are acknowledged, so this way opens when the acknowledgements are received and, there is, and the receive window advertised by the receiver. So once acknowledgement is received, then it will move towards the right. Or it may shrink depending on the, uh, the, the receiver's receive window. If the receiver says it's too much data, then the sender's send window will basically reduce in size. Right. The receive window will close when new bytes arrive from the sender, so this will go this way. Right. Opens when the bytes has been taken by the process, has been used, consumed, so that is free, and it does not shrink normally. Right. So the receive window is normally fixed. The send window is the one which is adjustable, right? according, to, according to what is advertised by the receiver. We'll, take, we'll, take the, we'll see the example here. Right. So this is where you, how it works. So first of all, the client will send, try to establish connection with the server, right? So here we, here we are assuming that the client is the one which is communi initial, initiating communication with the server. So client want to send data to server. So client will send synchronization uh, packet to the send server, right? And say, with synchronization, it will send what is, what is the sequence number of the client, okay, fine. When the server, what the server will do, it will prepare its receive window and then it will acknowledge the, the sequence number and say, okay, I received your 100, now I'm ready to receive your next packet, 101. So it will acknowledge 101 and then it will also send its own sequence number, right? So server sequence number is 1000. So client sends sin packet, the server sends sin and acknowledge, all right? And in the, the acknowledgement packet, it also sends the receive window. So the server will send what is the current receive window of the server, which is 800. So now the client will make use of this information and then adjust the size of the send window on the client side. Right, so the, the client send window will be adjusted according to the receive window advertised by the server. So we get 800 here. So we get 800 here, right, advertised by the server. So now the client will make sure that its window size is, send window size is set to 800, right? And the beginning, the first packet to be sent is 101, all right? So you can send from 101 to 900. That's the maximum you can send at one go, right? Because that's the capacity the server can receive, right? So what, okay, let's say in this example, so it, it, it acknowledges the sin plus acknowledgement uh, packet, right, you send the, the, this thing, and at the same time, the, the client will also advertise it is its receive window, it means that client it says that my receive window is 2000, that means if server sends data to client, this is the window it should use, right? but in this case, we, the server is not sending any data to the client, so this, this thing is ignored, all right? All right, so now the client sends 200, pack, 200 bytes of data, so sequence number 101, data is 200, all right? So now, when it, once, the, once the data arrives at the server, it will check, all right, 101, my receive window says anything between 101, first must receive data from beginning from 101, all right? Okay, I get 101 and I get 200 packets, bytes of data, all right? So now I've got 200 bytes of data and then it will be received. So once it received means that now the, the server is ready to receive the next from 301 now because it has received from 101 200 bytes, bytes of data and it, it has acknowledgements, it sends acknowledgement. 
Say so acknowledgement sign is 301. That means it has received data from until byte 300. Right? But now, since 200 bytes has been received and acknowledged, but these 200 bytes is not been used by the, has not been consumed or pulled by the, the server process yet. So it is still in the buffer. So now the receive window will actually be reduced by 200. So from 800 it becomes 600. Right? So the window's size shrinks, shrinks by 200 because this particular, the 200 bytes we send us now was, has not been consumed by the server process yet. Right? So now it says, so that means it can, it is, now it's only able to receive 600 bytes of data. And this new receive window must, will be sent back, will be advertised again to the client. So in, in the acknowledgement, it will, it, the server will indicate what's the next packet expected, next byte expected, as well as the new window size. Right? So looking at this, so once the client receives this, this acknowledgement, it will quickly adjust its window size. So earlier it was 800, now you make sure it's 600. Right? So what it means is that also now, and he knows that packets uh, up to 300 has been confirmed. So 100 to 300 has been confirmed, okay, so I can remove them from the window, right? But in this case, the window does not shift to the right, right? Because original, original size is 800. So it does not shift to the right because the new window size advertised by the server is now has been reduced, right? So but I can start sending from 301 because the server says it's ready to receive 301, right? Okay, so, we, so now the sender sends 300 bytes, okay, 300 bytes, 301. Now, again, the 300 bytes has been, once it receives, it's expecting 301, okay, so 301 plus 300, so next byte to be expected is 601, right, so it acknowledges that. Now, hundreds, 100 bytes of the original, from the, from the beginning of the buffer, can, it's already been used up. Remember here, it was in the buffer, waiting for the server process to consume it. Now, once the server process has pulled up, has pulled or has consumed these bytes, then receive window can actually be, uh, we can remove them from the receive buffer itself, right? So now, so now the receive window can increase by 100. So earlier it was here 900, now it can just to the right by 100, right? And then, we have received up to 600, so uh, yes, so 600, so our left side of the window will be pushed to the right. right? So now the window, new window size becomes 400, but it's still the same, 400 plus, from 200 to 600, there's also 400 here. Right? So total, total buffer size is still the same, 800. Earlier 600 plus 200 in the buffer, so 800. Now it's 400 here plus in the, in, the, in the window plus 400 waiting to be consumed by the server. So still, total size is still 800. Okay? So now the new, <coughs> the new window size will be advertised, will be again sent to the client in the acknowledgement packet. And now again the client will adjust its window size from 600 to 400 now. Right, so he knows that next packet expected is 6401, so it can shift the left side of the window to 600, but, and then uh, this is 300, and then to make sure 400, 6,100 plus 4 will be 1,000. Right, so he's ready to, receive, ready to send out data between 6, 601 to 1,000. Right. And then after, afterwards, when another 200 bytes of the from the buffer has been consumed by the server process, now the window size can, can increase by 200 now, right? 400 becomes 600. So the right hand side of the, of the buffer, uh, right hand side of the window can actually shift to the right, right? So 600 plus 200 still 800. So this window size will now again be advertised, right? So, so again, we are not, the, the, the server has not received any new data from the client, but it still sends a new acknowledgement because the window size has now changed. Right? So we're still expecting this packet 601, byte 601, 
but now window size has decreased to 600. So once you receive that, the client will actually adjust his send window to 600. All right? So this is how the, the window size, the sender's window size gets adjusted. Increase, decrease, based on the receive window size of the receiver itself. All right? So try to understand how it works. Now, next we look at the error control, right? How TCP handles errors. We, as we know, the TCP uh, basically ensures that data, the, the data sense is reliably, right? So, error control is used for, this is all we have seen before, for detecting and resending corrupted segments, loss, resending lost segments, storing out of, out of order segments until missing segments arrive, or detecting and discarding duplicate segments, right? All this we have seen before. So, what it uses, it uses checksum. Right, to basically look for, for checking corrupted segments. You use acknowledgement. Right, each packet sent, it must be acknowledged. So there's two types of acknowledgement here. One is accumulative acknowledgement. Remember, TCP uses the go back N protocol. So that, that's accumulative acknowledgement. At the same time, it also uses selective acknowledgement, the S A C K, right? This is basically to report out of order or duplicate segments. Segments which are re not received in order. You can still store them in the buffer, in the window, and then inform the sender that, okay, I received your packet, but it's not in order, right? It's not in sequence. It uses timeout and also retransmission policy, right? So basically, once it sends, sends out data, and if, the, if the no, no acknowledgement received after the timer expires, that means it assumes that the packet has been lost, right? And then it will uh, send the data again. So we'll take, take, a, take a look at an example here. So in order to facilitate this uh, uh, error control, there are a few rules used by TCP, very, very simple rules. First one is that if you have, you have data to send, and if you have data to send, send the data together with the acknowledgement, right? just like client is now. So if you have if the server, if the client sends data to the server, server also have data to send to the client. The server can send the, the server's data plus the acknowledgement in the same packet, right? Piggy bank it. We, don't, we, did, we want to, do not want to uh, put too much traffic on that. So we, we reduce the traffic going on on the, on, the, on the network, right? All right. Second thing is that now if you have no data to send and you receive a packet which is in sequence, Right? Then basically you delay sending the acknowledgement. Basically means that if if client send the data to the server, right? What the server is, will, server will not send out immediate acknowledgement. It will wait. It will wait for the next packet data to come. In other words, it will hold on sending acknowledgement until the second packet data arrives. Second byte arrives, right? So again, this reduces the number of acknowledgement. I don't have to acknowledge each one, right? So you send one, if I have nothing to send, I hold on first until the next packet comes, then only I will send the acknowledgement. Right? On the second packet, receive, I will send acknowledgement. Right? So the third rule says that if you receive, the sec if you receive a, a correct segment and the previous segment was not acknowledged, right? I receive a first packet, I did not acknowledge earlier because rule number two. Now I receive a second packet, now the rule says that I must acknowledge. I receive two packets in sequence, I must acknowledge them now. All right? So there should not be more than two, two, two packets unacknowledged segments at the same time. Right? <clears throat> then if, if, the, if the server receives packet seg segment which is not in sequence, right? the sequ sequence is higher than the one expected, then okay, fine, you accept it and then we will acknowledge immediately. Right? So packets, uh, segments received, not in order, not in sequence, will be acknowledged immediately, but they'll be accepted. And then again, when we receive a receive missing packet, rec missing segment, right? again, we will send acknowledgement uh, immediately so that the missing segment can be received straight away. Right? And if, if we receive a duplicate segment, segment which has already been received earlier, 
then the, the duplicate segment will be dropped, but the, the, the previous acknowledgement will be uh, resent out to say that to inform the client that please send this particular data. Right? You're you sending me data which are already there, but send me again the, the one I'm telling you which I understand. Right? <clears throat> so this is basically to show you the example how it works. Right? <clears throat> so look at it, look at it carefully. So client is sending data to the server starting from sequence 1201 to 1400, right? An acknowledgement. Now server, so server replies the, 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 the data, right? Acknowledgement. <coughs> uh, sorry. So. <clears throat> so server is oh sorry, so client is sending data from one two zero one to one four hundred, right? To the server. So server server also got data to send. Right? So now the rule says that if the server has data to send, then you send the data together with acknowledgement. Right? That's rule number one. So server will send its data plus also acknowledge the data which was received. So it will Receive until 1401, 1400, so acknowledge 1401. Right? So if you have data to send, send it together with the acknowledgement. Right? Now, so this packet is being sent to the client. Now, when he receives this, this data here, the client does not immediately reply to, to acknowledge. It does not reply immediately because the rules number two says that if you receive a packet, you not no data to send, then you wait for the, you don't send acknowledgement immediately. Wait for the next data segment to come, right? So if you start a timer, you won't send the, you won't send the acknowledgement for this data immediately, right? And then no, no new data is coming from the server, okay, then the timer goes out, okay, now I will acknowledge. Because within this, within this time frame, within this time frame, no new data was received, right? So now I have to send acknowledgement, okay? Time expire as an acknowledgement. Then, once acknowledgement received, the server sends the next set of data, right? So next next set of data. Again, the server will start its, the, the client will start its timer. The first packet of data received, don't acknowledge. Wait for the next packet of data comes. If next packet of data comes within the time time frame within the, within, before the timer expires, okay, now you acknowledge both of them together, one acknowledgement. Right? Basically, what you're saying is you acknowledge the second segment you receive. First segment, you hold on until you receive the second segment. If you don't receive second segment, wait for timeout, then send acknowledgement. Right? That's what he's trying to say. So this is okay, right? not a problem. Now let's take example where the segments sent are, are lost, right? So in this case, client sent his client sends uh, 501 to 600, right? It, and the server will not reply immediately because the rule says that okay, you receive a segment, you hold on, wait for the next segment to come. So he puts in a buffer, and then the client sends another one. Now two pack, two segment has been received, then the server will re reply, right? Together, okay, fine the acknowledgement is received, okay? Now, this, the client sends the next sequence, 701 to 800. Somehow this packet was lost, did not, did not reach the server. So this, the client sends in sequence two segments. First one was lost, second one was received. So when the second one was received, it's expecting this particular, it's expecting 701, right? But 701 was lost, what it receives 801. So what the server will do, it will put the 801 in the buffer, right? Out of order, not in sequence, never mind. Store it first, but immediately reply, acknowledge to the client to say that, hey, I'm, I'm waiting for 701. Although I received 801, but I'm expecting 701, right? So once the client get 701, it will know that, okay, the, the server is still waiting for 701. So it will, it will send, resend 701 again. So once this is gone, then 
all the packets, all the segments in the buffer now is in, in order, in sequence. So now the server will reply and say, I have received up to 900. Send me the 901 now. Right, so in this case, all the packets received earlier has been acknowledged. All right, so this is how the TCP handles the loss segments. Sim similar thing, right? Here, this time is trying to send very fast. Right, so okay, client sends two, quickly sends two, two segments together. The first one will not be acknowledged, only the second one will be acknowledged, okay, fine. And then uh, client sends another two sequence. The first one was uh, lost, right? So the second one will be, will be stored in the buffer, not in, not in order, but never mind. And then acknowledgement will be sent to, to remind the client that this is what he's expecting. But before this one arrives, uh, so this, the client is basically busy sending data very fast. Send 101, 1201, 301, 401, 501, 601, very fast, right? So once the acknowledgement arrives, but the client is still sending, the client is still sending 501, right? He sends 501, 601. But now each time he receives, the, the server receives the subsequent segments, he will put them in the buffer, but they're not, not in order. Right, there's something missing there. So the server will keep reminding the client, say, hey, send me 301, send me 301, send me 301. So once the client receives three duplicates of the same acknowledgement number, then the client will stop. Hey, this, 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 this server is telling me three times that he wants this particular segment. Right? So then it will, server will then transmit the missing segment. All right? After that, it will be completed. All the packets will be in the segments will be in order. Then the server will, will, will acknowledge that all the, all the packets has been received before this. Right? So what it says is that you can send data very very fast, no problem. Right? If one of the packets are missing, what the, the, the rule says that TCP will wait for three duplicate acknowledgement of the same number. Right? Once the third one comes, then it, it will go back and then send the one which is requested right this this basically try to reduce try to, to, to try to improve the uh, communication tr the, the transmission between the sender and the client now example where the acknowledgement is lost right <clears throat> so again the, the server the client is sending data very fast to the server send 501 601 701 801 Right, so 501 is sent to the server. Server first, first segment you receive, you don't reply normally. You wait until the second one comes. Once you receive the second one, it will reply, uh, acknowledge the two packets together. Somehow the acknowledgement was lost, right? And then <clears throat> the client continues sending 701, 801. So once the, once the server receives 801, 701, 801, right? So it's, it assumes this as the server is assumed that this, this acknowledgement reaches the client. As far as server is concerned, it has sent out the acknowledgement. So the next packet, is, next segment received after that, you will wait first. Okay, first segment come after my acknowledgement, I wait first, and then I will send the second one. Second segment received after that, I will send a new acknowledgement. Right. So once you send a new acknowledgement, which basically tells that all the segments received before nine zero one are okay. So all these four are okay. So as far as client is concerned, it has received confirmation for all these segments sent. Although one acknowledgement was lost, no big deal. Right? It was handled, handled by the TCP itself. Right? The, the, the rules basically make sure that if acknowledgement, one acknowledgement was lost, no problem. Right? As long as the client send, keeps sending data, and then you, at the end you receive the acknowledgement which confirms all the segments received earlier has been received correctly, you are fine, right? Now in this case, let's say, this is a different example, right? So client sends two segments together again. First one, not, not acknowledge uh, the server waits for, does not res respond immediately for the first segment, it waits for the second one to come. Second, once you can receive two of them, it will send acknowledgement. Let's say this acknowledgement was lost. But now, the client has not, no data to send. 
right? So you, you wait and wait and wait for the acknowledgement to arrive. But acknowledgement was lost, right? So then once the timer goes out, time expires, still no acknowledgement for the two segments I sent. So what the client will do? It will resend, right? It will resend the, it assumes that these this packets were not, were not received by the server, right? So it resends. <coughs> So once we send 501, but 501 <coughs> has already been received earlier by the server. So now the server is receiving a duplicate of the same one. Right? So what the server will do now, it will, it will uh, drop, it will, it, it will uh, discard this particular segment, but it will acknowledge and say that, hey, I'm, I'm waiting for 701. Why you send me 501? Right? I'm, I'm expecting 701. So basically, the server will inform the client of the, of the correct data to be expected next. So by receiving this, the client will know that I sent from 501 to, and then to 601 to 700, it says, so that means both these packets has been received now because the acknowledgement says so, right? <clears throat> okay, so again, the, the situation is handled by the TCP uh, uh, procedure. Right, finally, <coughs> we take a look at the, the timers. Right? Here we say that there's a timer here. So TCP uses two types of timers, <coughs> the, the, the retransmission and the keep alive. The retransmission is used, the retransmission timer is used to retransmit lost segments, right? as, as mentioned earlier. So if segments are lost or the acknowledgements are lost, right, then we use the timers to Start. Each time you send a packet of data, you start a timer. Right? So you must receive acknowledgement within this time frame. If you don't, don't receive something, then something is wrong. Right? So it handles retransmission timeout. So it basically, the timer is, is a waiting time for acknowledgement to be received, right? for the segment to arrive. So the, the question is, how much time do you wait? How much time the client will wait? One second, two second? 10 minutes, 20 minutes, how long do you wait? Right, so the timers are basically uh, calculated based on the, the round trip time. What is the average round trip time between the client and the server? That means how much time does it take for a packet to travel from the client to server and back? Right, two, two way. So what the, what the, the, when you the TCP starts, it will send out these this, this probes, right? It will, it will calculate this, this, this uh, average time, this, this return time, and then it will send multiple times and take the average. Right? So that average will be used as the transmission timer. So now on average, it will take say uh, two milliseconds to send data between the client and the server. Right? So my timer will be about two milliseconds then. And it will, it will do this continuously. After some time, it will check again, what is the new, what is the new round trip time? Right? Because the round trip time will depend on the congestion. Right? If, it, if the network is heavily congested, then it will take longer for the packets to arrive. Then the, the RTT, RTT time will also be adjusted accordingly. The second timer is basically keep alive. Right? Now remember, if you go back to this diagram earlier, <coughs> the first one, yeah. Right? So after the after the, the TCP opens connection, the connection has been established between the sender and receiver, right? Okay, now server is waiting for data to come and client is also ready. So after send some data, each time you send data, it will acknowledge and so on. After that, the client keeps quiet. Keeps quiet, keeps quiet for 20 minutes, one hour, two hours, not sending data, right? But the server is still waiting. Right? It cannot close connection because server can only close connection if if there's a request from the client, right? So the thing is, how long do you wait? How long we should wait for idle activity? So if, if the connection between the client and the server becomes idle, there's no data communication taking place, how long you should wait? Right? That, that's the question. That's, the, that's where the retransmission, uh, sorry. That's when the, the keep alive timer comes in. So if the connection between the client and server becomes idle. That means after some time, no data is exchanged between client and server. Then the TCP 
of, the, of both client and server will try to send some kind of keep alive packets. Say that, okay, I'm alive. Right? That means I, I'm still, still there, but I'm not sending data right? from time to time. Right? So each time, each time the server hears, hears, uh, hears from the client, it resets the timer. So the keep alive timer will reset. So normally the, the limit is two hours. Right? The TCP's limit or TCP's patience is only two hours. If two hours it does not hear from the client, it will close connection by itself. Right? So what, what the TCP client will do before two, or two hours are up, if nothing happens, then it will keep a reminder and say, inform the server that, okay, I'm still alive, I'm still there, but I've seen nothing, nothing to send. Right? So please don't close connection yet. That's the idea. And uh, if there's no response, if, if, you send a keep alive, if you send a keep alive uh, packet and there's no response, you send 10 times and then no response, then the server will uh, terminate the connection uh, forcefully. Right? Okay? All right, that's the end then. Okay?